Hello, I'm Only Jax, and today I'm going to be giving you the ultimate Giga Chad Black Pilled Normie Proof Looks Maxing Guide to take yourself from a sub 5 basement dwelling goblin to someone with Adonis like jeans like me. But let me warn you. If you are not completely committed to opening up your weak mind and more importantly your thick wallet to me and my looks maxing guide, then sorry virgins, this transformation plan isn't going to work for you. In the minutes that follow, you're going to be given the most in-depth, testosterone-fueled, GigaChat approved looks maxing guide created by yours truly, dumbed down for your subhuman, beta male boy mind to understand. So without further ado, stop gooning, get your hand out of your pants, and let's get to it. Hey, sorry for the bait and switch there. I couldn't think of a good segue into the actual video, so this will have to do. Looks maxing. If you're watching this video, then I would imagine that you already have an idea of what it is and what's to follow. You're probably thinking, oh, looks maxing, that thing that incels do to make themselves more attractive to get girls. But despite what you may think, no, yeah, that's exactly what it is. There are a million videos, I'm sure, already making fun of the practice and its practitioners, and I don't intend to be another one of those. In fact, and you may call this a research mistake, but I haven't watched any other videos reacting to looks maxing outside of the one Charlie video talking about male enhancement. A big part of looks maxing is about your wiener and being insufficient to sexually pleasure a woman, stretching the penis in dangerous ways that often cause irreversible damage. They'll have you beaten your skin flute like it owes you money. And Instead, I went into someone who wanted to be taught the ways of looks maxing, and I was surprised with what I found. I found some things that I actually agreed with and think are positive habits to include in your daily routine, and some things are just obvious scams and don't actually work. In this video, I'd like to talk about my findings and my thoughts regarding this whole looks maxing thing. At the end, I will even, just like the opening said I would, give you a looks maxing routine that may not make you look like handsome Squidward, but should at least set you down another path to look like normal SpongeBob. So, if this sounds good to you, Strap in, put me on in the background while you draw, or whatever, and enjoy the ride. Looks maxing in its most basic definition is anything you do to improve your aesthetic or your appearance. Its roots go back to the 2010s on incel message boards before finding a more widespread audience somewhere between 2019 to 2020 when the whole shh mewing trend among other viral trends kind of took over the landscape the practice is broken up into two parts you've got hard maxing and soft maxing soft maxing refers to everyday good habits you can do at home generally without surgery to improve your look or aesthetic it covers things such as brushing your teeth every day taking a shower moisturizing your skin and i know it sounds crazy you have to remember here that we're dealing with incels and terminally online people so showering every day to a lot of these guys might seem a little foreign and with that another Another term for soft maxing would just be personal hygiene and fitness. Anything that would fit into either the personal hygiene category or the fitness category is soft maxing. I guess also maybe fashion too would be soft maxing. Check out the new Only Jax hat. <laughs> Onlyjax.jax.www forward slash creed thoughts backslash creed thoughts forward class www.com. That was pretty sweet. Hard maxing is a bit more extreme and it deals with things such as hair transplants, dental surgery, or really any cosmetic surgery. So basically, if it involves a doctor, heavy medicine, or surgery, you're hard maxing. The basic idea of looks maxing is for you to correct what's called your phalos, or the things on your body that aren't exactly aesthetically pleasing. This could be an underdeveloped chin, uh, acne on your face, a receding hairline, fat, or anything else on your face or body that isn't exactly aesthetically appealing. The sort of Greek statue face and physique is kind of what you're going for here. Like with any belief system, there are a few forums online and several YouTubers that you can seek out for help with your looks maxing journey. Help and advice offered from these sources range anywhere in quality from, duh, yeah, everyone should be doing that, to, oh, this is a scam. So your mileage may vary depending on who you go to for advice. Let me give you my honest thoughts about all this. From a non-incel perspective, looks maxing as it came into being is a practice originally started by incels 
four incels for the purpose of making yourself so good looking that rather than learn how to talk to girls, they'll come up and flock to you. For those who can't handle rejection or are just simply too nervous to build up the confidence to say hello to a girl, looks maxing serves as a way to validate the illusion that girls are unattainable and unapproachable if you are a normal looking guy. Having said that, Outside of the rampant misogyny and racism that you're gonna find on the looks maxing forums, among other things, looks maxing isn't all that bad. And I would argue, if this is the way you need to be talked into taking a f shower, then I'm all for it. Obviously, I don't condone the racist misogyny part, but it's, it's the consistent showering is what I'm a huge fan of. Like any online group of people, the looks Max and Giga Chads have their own lingo, which I thought I would be privy to as I am also terminally online, but no, I was just as lost as someone who gets outside to touch grass. So here are some common terms I heard while researching and their definitions. Black pilled. Starting off strong here with black pilled. Listen, I'm gonna be real with you. Getting a straight up Webster's dictionary definition for these terms is gonna be tough, but here's about the best I could do for black pill. So basically you have your red pill, which is essentially the pill that lets you awake from the matrix and see things for how they really are, right? So imagine now if that pill were black and along with you being able to awake from the matrix, you become a nihilist and realize that everything is stacked against you, nothing really matters. And unless you were born with godlike genetics, no woman is ever gonna want you. At least that's what I think it means. Because this guy Roars, who by the way, I think is one of the better looks maxers if you were gonna go look any of them up for yourselves, but Roars uses the term differently. Because when he's saying it in context, it just sounds like he's using the word black pilled in place of red pilled. So I'm not even sure if the definition I gave is anything close to what it actually means. Chad, use the same as other incel groups. This is a Chad, a man in peak male attractiveness and physique. Stacy, same as a Chad, but a girl. This one too is borrowed from the wider incel community. Tyrone, a Chad who was black. Sub five. If attractiveness is on a scale from one to 10, then five would be your average. Anyone who is a sub five is uglier than your average man. That one was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh wait, depending on who you ask, a sub five could be someone who's less than a five on the normal one through 10 scale, or they could be a sub five on this whole other scale called the PSL scale. For YouTube's sake, I won't say what that acronym stands for. That one only goes up to eight and solely grades you by your face and face alone. So being a sub five there, I guess, would be better, but not by much. Also, I took a look at a few examples of people who score high on the PSL scale, and honestly, six and above all look pretty much the same to me, but that might be because I'm a sub five subhuman who can't fathom beauty beyond a PSL six. SMV. SMV stands for sexual market value. Basically, you can raise or lower your SMV by how attractive you are, how you dress, how you act, how much money you make, etc. It's something you'd only really pay attention to if you're in a constant state of comparing yourself to everyone else. Men. Be wary of this, because if you're going around assessing the sexual market value of every man you come across, that's liable to turn you gay. Don't ask me how I know how. Mog slash mogged. This one I couldn't find a good solid definition for either. Some people say that mog stands for man of God, but that doesn't make sense contextually when talking about someone's appearance. I read somewhere that mog comes from the acronym AMOG, which stands for alpha male of the group, which makes a bit more sense to me, but for our purposes, mog, mog, Mogging, mogged, or mogger refers to someone who is or the action of simply being better looking than someone else in close proximity or online if they're sending pictures back and forth or maybe in a Zoom call or something. Like think of the Zoolander walk-off scene. Zoolander and Hansel are basically mogging each other. Did any of those terms make sense to you guys? If so, let me know in the comments. If not, subscribe. <laughs> So now that we have that foundation set, we can finally get into the practices of looks maxing. Psych, another bait and switch. Uh, we gotta talk about this next thing first. We gotta talk about genetics. Maybe this doesn't have as much to do with looks maxing as I thought, or maybe I'm projecting here, but a topic that comes up a lot from fitness influencers and looks maxing forums is talk about bad genetics. A lot of these guys will say things like, if you have bad genetics, there are still things you can do to get you to a five or a six on the attractiveness scale. I thought for a long time that because men on my dad's side of my family were fat, then that means genetically I myself am more prone to be fat. I accepted defeat and didn't even give it a second thought. 
That's how I rationalized gaining all of my weight back after I had lost close to 60 pounds after graduating high school. And I know that the looks maxing guys and the fit tubers are probably talking more about bone structure genetics than anything else, but let me offer a different way of thinking when it comes to that. When you look at pictures of men a hundred years ago versus now, you will definitely notice that, in general, men had more defined jaw lines, a more furrowed brow, and more defined cheekbones maybe than your average man today. A lot of fitness influencers will talk about genetics being a key factor in how quickly you lose weight and or put on muscle, saying that people with bad genetics will take longer to lose weight and much longer to put on muscle, but they generally won't break down who has bad genetics and who doesn't or tell you how likely it is that you have bad genetics, just saying that this might be an issue for you. And as far as other things go, like adult acne, I mean, what the f***? I thought we were supposed to only get zits as teenagers, but somehow a lot of guys are still having this issue well into their 20s. Must be bad genetics, right? Well, what if I told you that everyone has good genetics, actually? Well, mostly everyone. Let me say, I'm not a doctor, and so don't take my word as gold or anything. Rather, let me give you a different perspective on this whole bad genetics thing. While it's true that some people don't exactly have what we would usually refer to as good genetics maybe when it comes to bone structure, see, Leafy is here, or maybe their hairline, see, me, I'm going to argue that for the things that matter, mainly weight, skin, and muscle mass, we all have good genetics. We learn in high school that it takes a species hundreds of thousands of years to evolve or change their genetics, sometimes even longer. If you don't believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this next point will mean even more to you than it does to me. According to the Smithsonian Museum, it took humans six to seven million years to evolve from their ape-like ancestors into human beings as we know them today. The Smithsonian also says that the first actual humans, Homo sapiens, weren't even around until maybe 300,000 years ago. So then, let's take a look at this secularly and scientifically. A hundred years ago, we men all had genetics that made us look great, gave us hot chiseled jawlines, predator eyebrows, the ability to seemingly add muscle and lose weight at will, and clear skin, and then somehow within the last four generations our genetics just decided to go to shit? That's r Here's something you can try. Pull up or find some pictures of your great-grandparents or even your great-great-grandparents, preferably when they were in their 20s or 30s. I'm going to bet that they look fantastic. Very healthy looking, skinny, great bone structure, etc. So, remembering what we just talked about as far as evolution goes, do you really think that in the last three or four generations we miraculously evolved genetically to be fat, ugly basement dwellers? Well, maybe you did, but I refuse to believe that's the case for me and everyone else. Okay, not a Dr. Jax. If it's not genetics making me fat, ugly, and weak, then what is? Great, I'm glad you asked. Let's keep thinking about our great-great-grandparents for a second. Assuming that our genetics didn't evolve, what did? Hormones. Our hormones evolved. This is real, and you can look this up. Us as men, on average, have 60% lower testosterone now than we did 100 years ago. And just between 1999 and 2016, testosterone levels have dropped in men by 25%. The low T meme doesn't seem as funny anymore now, does it? I'm looking at you. Now, we all know that testosterone is the hormone that makes you manly, just as estrogen is the hormone that makes you girly, but what exactly does testosterone do? Outside of making you feel big and strong, testosterone is responsible for helping you maintain a healthy bone density, it regulates your sex drive, meaning the more you have, the more horny you get, is responsible for helping you put on muscle, same kind of logic here, the more testosterone you have, the more muscle you have, generally, and get this, testosterone is responsible for keeping your fat in check. How long does it take to evolve genetically? Hundreds of thousands of years. How long does it take to evolve hormonally? Could be as little as a few months. Now, if you're like me and you've hormonally evolved for the worst throughout your childhood and early adult life, you may feel screwed over because it's not like you were doing this knowingly or on purpose. We will get into some tips and lifestyle changes later in the video, but just know this for now, your poor hormonal evolution is reversible. <laughs> 
before I get into how absolutely ridiculous and insecurity ridden this whole practice is, let me just say three things. One, stop watching adult movies and get off of Cornhub. Don't let these liberals fool you. There is nothing beneficial about it. It oftentimes leads to addiction and intimacy issues and portrays a less than realistic version of sexual reality. Is sex awesome? Absolutely. Is it better than the videos? Absolutely. Is it anything like the videos? Absolutely not. As well as the men featured in these videos are not the standard and it is wild to try to compare yourself to them. Two, the average size is between five and five and a half inches and three, that thing you're trying to hit is three inches in and angled towards the front. So statistically speaking, you have two inches to spare. Without getting into the specifics, jelking is basically a set of exercises that a man can do to make his little Johnson bigger. There are plenty of websites and YouTube videos you can watch on the topic, so that'll save me, thankfully, from telling you what the exercises are, thank God. While many men claim they found success doing this set of exercises, according to the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, there ain't no such scientific evidence to say that it works. Perhaps they just manifest in it. Furthermore, the SMSNA says that it's likely that you can injure yourself or even develop some sort of erectile dysfunction doing it, so I mean, think of it this way. You can either be happy with what God gave you or risk not being able to use it at all. You tell me what's better. I think I'll risk it. I, I think I might risk it. Nah, I'm just playing. The opinion of this channel is, unless you have a micro wiener, and if you do, I'm so, so sorry. This still isn't gonna work for you, but I am sorry. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, but unless that's the case, you're fine. Stop watching corn and comparing yourselves to freaks of nature. If you're worrying about this and it's getting in the way of your dating life, then it's indicative of a deeper feeling of inadequacy and no amount of Jell King is gonna help you there, brother. What you need is a better sense of fulfillment and possibly therapy. And you look while doing it, so there's that. So bone smashing is this funny little thing where you take a hammer or some other blunt object and repeatedly smash it into your face. Okay, well it's not that extreme, but it's not exactly safe or effective either. It's based on the premise of Wolf's Law, where basically if you subject a bone to repeated stress, it'll restructure itself to be stronger and better equipped to handle such stress. Be like if you broke your leg and then your leg came back stronger. Some people on the internet have taken this premise and figured that if you just take a hammer to your face and jaw, then those bones will restructure and become more protruding and prominent. Basically, the idea is the hammer or whatever object you use creates little micro fractures on your face bones that once healed, create a more aesthetically pleasing and stronger bone. And you guessed it, there's no real proof that this works. I've heard the case made where people will say, well, look at fighters who get punched in the face a lot. Look at their perfect protruding brow. And yeah, sure, maybe. But these guys are taking hits to the face in the ring, not your dad's hammer in your bathroom. Also, these same fighters are the same guys fracturing their skulls, like for real, in the ring. I'm sure there's a correlation between Mike Tyson looking like a caveman and his hundreds of hits to the face, but the risk involved with getting there just can't be worth it. It seems like the amount of force you would actually need to reshape your face would be similar to the force that a trained MMA fighter would deliver right to your eye socket if you were ever unlucky enough to piss him off. And that's definitely not the force you're going to be using when you're bone smashing. Risks of bone smashing include irreparable nerve damage, muscle damage, and loss of function to your face, internal bleeding, and bruising to your face, which I guess could be a good thing if you're trying to impress her by looking like you were just in a fight, but at that point just actually man up and join a fighting gym. And lastly, for my looks maxers who haven't fully matured yet, bone smashing can permanently stunt your bone growth so you're screwed for the rest of your life. And you look ridiculous while doing it, so there's that. Here's a fun one, and let me repeat, stop watching corn. I don't care what they taught you in public school, it's bad for your brain and it's low T behavior. Anyway, I think this one is more looks maxing adjacent rather than mainline looks maxing, but there's a decent number of guys online actively trying to maximize their goon juice production. For whatever reason, corn perhaps? Some guys are convinced that the amount of goon juice they release after a goon sesh is indicative of their SMV. Hey, check it out. We got to use one of those new fancy vocab words we learned earlier. Anyway, yeah, so somehow these guys have got it into their head that somehow they'll get ahead sexually if they're shooting webs like Spider-Man instead of a normal human amount. So to increase the amount of goon juice they expel, guys have been turning to exercises and supplements such as and 
you guys thought I was just going to tell you my secrets? <laughs> no way. I'm gatekeeping this one forever. Or maybe I'll spill the beans in my members only community page. I don't know. I don't know. Just kidding. I guess what I think puts this in the bad category is the intent behind it. If you're a young man or I guess an old man too, and you and your wife of many years are trying for a baby and just can't seem to get the stork to drop one at your door, sure, yeah, this may be something you want to check out. Although I feel like your time might be better spent with a fertility doctor. If you're just trying to goon bigger goons because you think it makes you more sexually valuable and attractive to women, you're actually insane. And us as a society has fallen much farther than I originally thought. Also, if you're gooning enough to be taking measurements of the goon juice and keeping track of it, my guy, that's kind of gay. According to Medical News Today, the normal male expels about one teaspoon of goon juice per gooning session, although younger men tend to expel more than men after their prime. So while I think it's stupid to be worried about this, unless again, you're struggling to make a baby, here's a few things to consider if you're dribbling goon juice like there's nothing in the tank. Stop gooning. You're gooning too much. Hey man, your body isn't just some portal into a dimension made solely out of goon juice. If you're gooning daily or even a few times a week, your body just does not have enough time to make more. Give your little Johnson a break and go touch grass or something. Also, studies show that the amount of goon juice you produce is directly linked to how aroused you are. So if you're sitting in your computer chair doing the same old goon and dance, no wonder you've got nothing in there. And if you notice that while you're doing the deed with the girl and only very little is coming out, well... Maybe that's a conversation between you and her. Either way, unless you're struggling to make a baby, goon juice maxing is something that, in my professional opinion, isn't something worth worrying about. If you're insecure about your goon juice, it's a symptom of a deeper insecurity or sense of inadequacy, and your time is better spent figuring out what the root of that problem is. This is more of a trend that I've noticed rather than like a practice, but man, these guys are obsessed with themselves. One of the reasons you end up looks maxing is to attract women, and this literally just clicked for me while writing this, but a bunch of these guys talk about getting to a point where you are so attractive that women start approaching you versus you approaching women, and that's just so funny to me. Like, incels will literally do anything other than talk to a girl to try to attract girls. And I mean, the determination is real when it comes to looks maxing. Hey, instead of working up the nerve to just say hi to a lady, let me smash the bones in my face until I'm handsome Squidward so they'll have to say hi to me first. Man, I feel like such an idiot for not realizing that sooner. The silver lining is, is that looks maxing is probably one of the more tame things that incels do when you compare this to some of the other horrendous acts and behaviors this group takes part in yeah looks maxing doesn't seem so bad and i think this is indicative of the whole culture as far as terminally online men is concerned so i don't know just a thought it would make sense to instead of focusing a hundred percent inward and on your own shortcomings to maybe look outward and connect with the world around you if you're always thinking about just your own shortcomings that's going to translate to those around you man or woman whether you talk about it or not it's magic i know but somehow we're all just kind of connected like that and if for some reason you are unable to detach your mind from all of your surface level unachievable goals here's a trick i learned in theater yes very surprising only Jax was a gay theater kid oh he learned this in theater he's a gay theater kid yeah never beating the gay allegations or the Baja Blast allegations let's say you have to do a scene all by yourself to a crowd of 1,000 people and for whatever reason every time you do the scene you make some sort of mistake all in all you're still able to do the scene and have it make sense even if you forget a line or two if you were to go up on stage and say to the audience hey I'm still working out all the kinks in this scene so I might make one or two mistakes while I'm up here then for the entire performance the audience is just going to be listening for every mistake you make rather if you just go up on stage do your scene even with the mistakes odds are the audience isn't even gonna know about it. So suffice it to say, if you're unable to detach your mind from all of the surface level unachievable goals you have, do yourself a favor and at least just don't talk about it. The odds are, if you're not talking about it, no one else is gonna realize. I recorded this separately because I just forgot to keep saying it, but um, subscribe, subscribe. This is the semen retention one. This should be the last gooning related category. Um, 
This isn't what I wanted the video to be. This one's a little weird for me to talk about just because fundamentally I agree. Stop gooning. The reason it winds up being in the questionable category is because as far as looks maxing goes, the benefits of semen retention, no fap, no fap hard mode, no fap monk mode, don't really make sense to me. The basic idea of semen retention is that by not gooning, your free testosterone levels increase. A lot of looks maxers will put semen retention in the testosterone building category, which at first seems like it would make sense, but free testosterone does not come from your balls. There is little, if any, scientific evidence to back up that semen retention actually boosts testosterone outside of one small study that claimed that abstinence, up to seven days, led to a marginal increase of free testosterone in the body. Despite this being in the questionable category, I think personally, any excuse to not goon is a good excuse. So even though I may have put it in the questionable category does not mean that you shouldn't do it. If you are at a point in your life where you are gooning all the time and semen retention seems like something you might want to do, do it. However, for the most part, I think this category would be better placed not so much in the testosterone building category, but in the mindset category as if you are a habitual gooner, this is going to be something that's going to require a lot of meditation and commitment to actually succeed with. The ease of access to gooning material or other lewd and or lascivious content online has been a disaster for the human race, both for men and women, although in different ways. I might catch some shit for this, but for women, corn being in Powering makes no sense as in the process of producing and making this content, you'll wind up boiling yourself down to the most surface level, one dimensional version of yourself. This sentiment is echoed by people like Mia Khalifa, Riley Reed, among others. Is there a significant amount of money that can be made doing this, thus empowering yourself financially? Yes, absolutely. But keep in mind that the people enjoying and paying for your content have in their minds boiled you down to a piece of meat you strictly for pleasure. They wouldn't care about any of the thoughts in your head or the feelings in your heart. They just care how much D you can fit into your Well, it doesn't really matter what hole just as long as something can fit in it. And for guys, dude, despite what your echo chamber may tell you, corn and your goon obsession is ruining your shot with real girls while also ruining the actual experience for you. Take it from me as someone who's done the deed, it's a little bit like the videos, but not much. The videos you see are specifically designed to trigger every pleasure sense in your brain, locking you in and making you quite literally a slave to your screen. Gooning ruins intimacy as well because think of it, why are you gooning? Are you gooning for just a quick release or are you gooning to escape from the reality that you're not man enough to get out there and talk to a lady. I'm going to argue the latter point because let's be honest guys, if you had the guts to say hi to a girl, you probably wouldn't need AOF subscriptions just to get you going. Corn addiction is real. Gooning addiction is real. It's bad for women and how men perceive them. It's bad for men and how, even if it's not conscious, it allows men to view women as something to be objectified, bought, rented, or borrowed, what have you, while also ruining your shot at a real life girl. Back before the time of the internet, it wasn't as big of an issue as it is now, probably because even though it was out there, it wasn't nearly as widespread and the amount of effort you had to go through to get your hands on some gooning material was, I would imagine for younger men, more effort than it was worth. Anyway, to bring it all back around to semen retention, there's no evidence that really says semen retention boosts testosterone, so that's not a good reason to do it, despite what some looks maxers will say. However, the social and mental benefits of abstaining from gooning, to me, seem to be insanely worth it to the point that any reason to stop gooning is a good reason to stop gooning. That was a little rough. Mewing. We've all either heard about it or seen the shh outline your jaw meme on TikTok. Mewing, or orthotropics, was founded by Dr. John Mew, and its focus is on guiding facial growth to optimize function and your aesthetics. Basically, it's some exercises you can do to help your jaw look and work better. There's a bit more to it than that, but essentially, mewing is basically just correcting your tongue posture, or where your tongue sits in your mouth. According to the practice, the ideal resting position for your tongue is your tongue pressed completely against the roof of your mouth and not touching your front teeth at all. Or worse, hanging at the bottom of your mouth. This tongue posture is supposed to help raise your maxilla, 
this bone on your face and widen your jaw. Also, it's supposed to help with mouth breathing, which makes sense because it's difficult to mouth breathe when you've got your tongue resting on the top of your mouth like that. Looks maxers swear that mewing works to take your jawline from zero to hero, but let's be real and ask, does it really work? I ask this question because it seems like the people who are promoting mewing are people who already have killer jawlines to begin with. Like, show me a before and after picture from an adult who had a leafy chin to start with. Show me the real results. According to the American Association of Orthodontists, they say, quote, Unfortunately, scientific evidence supporting Mewing's jawline sculpting claims is as thin as dental floss. A complex interplay of genetics, bone growth, and muscle development influences facial structure. Simply changing tongue placement isn't enough to magically correct misaligned teeth, reshape your jawline, and prevent the need for orthodontic treatment. So if that's all you need to hear, then that's it. Mewing is bullshit. Also, I can't say that in good faith without telling you my experience with mewing. Now, I don't have before and after pics, and honestly, I don't think my jawline improvement is due to mewing, more so I think that it's due to weight loss, but I started mewing because I saw or read somewhere that mewing could correct jaw clicking. Jaw clicking is basically when your jaw clicks. My jaw would click when I spoke, yawned, and most annoyingly when I ate. My sister, Only Take, can tell you all about this. It was annoying to hear, and it was crazy annoying to feel. Also, I could basically pop my jaw like you could pop your knuckles, and sometimes it felt really good. Like, every morning when I would do my morning stretch and yawn, the yawn would generally make my jaw pop, and it would feel really good and loose after that. But sometimes it would cause my jaw to lock up, and I would either not be able to close it or open it for an undetermined amount of time while my body figured out what the hell was going on. I was what are we going through a breakup at the time, so, as well as researching how to get over the breakup and move on, I was also researching about my jaw clicking and that led me to mewing. Again, I had already seen the memes in the TikToks and I already kind of had an opinion formed, but I was a bit desperate, so I took it a bit more seriously than I would have before. And a year and a half later, no click. No discomfort while chewing, no morning jaw pops, nothing. It worked for me. Now, like I said earlier, did it widen my jaw and move my maxilla? I don't know, probably not. Do I think it corrected whatever was positionally or functionally wrong with my jaw to make it click and pop like that? Yeah, I absolutely do. Not to mention the vast amount of research to suggest that mouth breathing is not only unattractive, but is the least optimal way to breathe. I mean, how do you think we got to a point where mouth taping is a thing? So do with this information what you will. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna recommend anyone mew, but in the same breath, it seems to have worked for me, albeit my problem wasn't that I had a beta male jawline. Either way, uh, talk to an orthodontist and or do your own research if this is something you're thinking about doing. Or don't. I don't control you. I don't, I don't fucking do that. No! I had a lot of things to say about this category. Having lost and gained a bunch of weight throughout my life, I consider myself a bit of an expert. Suffice it to say that maybe this isn't the right video to put my fat phobia on full display. I had about two pages worth of advice, thoughts, and things that have worked for me written here, but I'd rather not deal with a bunch of angry fat people in my comment section should this video blow up like the zoo file one did. So let me give you a much shorter version of what I was gonna say. Looks maxers tell you to lose weight. They are right. Any excuse to lose excess fat is a good excuse. Fat loss and being a normal weight is key to looking attractive. Fat loss and being a normal weight is key to being healthy. You cannot be healthy and be fat at the same time. You can be not in dire risk of dropping dead and be fat, sure, but excess fat is inherently unhealthy. Fat literally eats testosterone and shits estrogen. Estrogen helps your body put on fat. Your body now has lower testosterone and you you have more fat. More fat eats more testosterone and shits more estrogen. More estrogen puts on more fat and the cycle continues. Any fat loss method short of an eating disorder, surgical, medicinal, or traditional is a good thing. I myself jump started my fat loss this time with compounded semaglutide, more commonly referred to as Ozempic. I haven't taken a shot in a month at this point and I've continued to lose weight. If you have people in your life who either wouldn't encourage or actively discourage your fat loss, they are not your friends, they want you to be unhealthy and die sooner. In reality, if you have a little or a lot of excess fat, you don't need me telling you the millions of reasons to lose it. Love yourself, love your body, lose the fat. I won't tell you a certain body weight percentage is ideal. Some sources say 6%, some sources say 12%. I think I'm hovering somewhere around 20% just based off of some reference charts I found on Google, so I'll leave that to you to figure out. The rule of thumb is 
is that you should look like a rectangle, not an oval. Some looks maxers swear by 6%, and while I don't think that's realistic for most men, I won't stop you from trying to do that. Any fat loss is good fat loss. Oh, and also, like we said, less fat means more testosterone, so... Come on, it's 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 free testosterone. Drop f***ing weight. This is a long section, so and this is this is the long section, and we're gonna be talking about organic food. We're gonna be talking about fat. So if you can't handle those topics, well, I'm I'm sorry. You should have found someone else to watch because this is what we do on this channel. Bold statements only. Every looks maxer is gonna tell you to stop eating all of the gross processed foods. They're correct in doing so. Those foods, if you are eating them, are probably what's making you fat. The basic looks maxing advice is to change your diet from eating fattening, processed, refined as fuck foods to eating more whole foods or just simply making your own food at home. This is solid ass advice. I will let you remind yourself why cutting processed foods and making food at home is the obvious option when it comes to your health. You don't need another lecture from some doucher on the internet about that. I'd like to break this down from a purely financial perspective. I used to be someone who believed that eating fast food was indeed cheaper than buying food to make at home. A lot of people echo this thought and it's just simply wrong. Oh, I gotta poop. I gotta shit after this. Eating out, even at a fast food restaurant, is ridiculously expensive. And it only gets more expensive if you have more than one mouth to feed. The average meal at McDonald's is now something like $15 if you just get the combo, without any of the extra stuff. If you were to eat out all three meals a day, you're looking at a $45 per day food budget. That's $315 a week, or $1,350 a month. Obviously, that's the worst case scenario, but still, it's wild to realize just how expensive food has become when you eat out, even at a notoriously cheap fast food chain. Within the last year, I've transitioned myself to eating most, if not all, of my food at home. I decided to eat organic if I can and stick to as many whole foods as possible. Of course, I still eat processed foods once or twice on the weekends, but generally, the only processed foods I'll eat during the week are tortillas at this point, and even those I'm making at home. So I wanted to break down what I eat in a week just so I can show you the daily cost breakdown of my food versus our worst case scenario. I get my groceries from two places mainly, the farmer's market once a week and then Whole Foods. For this breakdown, I'm just gonna pretend that I only shop at Whole Foods. I eat twice a day generally, and my meals are generally chicken, rice, and a vegetable. Sometimes I'll go a little crazy and get a ribeye, but for the most part, I'm eating chicken, rice, and asparagus. Organic chicken at Whole Foods is $10 a pound, which is ridiculously expensive by the way. But for that price, you get somewhere between two or three chicken breasts, let's just say we get two chicken breasts or $10 per day. Organic jasmine rice costs about $17 for 64 ounces, and 64 ounces generally last me a whole month, but let's assume you eat more rice than I do and double the amount to $35 or $1.15 per day. A bundle of organic asparagus is gonna cost you around six or $7, and I generally eat half a bundle for each meal, which is more than enough asparagus, so $7 per day. This is a complete meal that you can eat every day and get all of your macronutrients in. Let's add some extra fat in the form of butter, which will cost you around $8 for two sticks of the fancy grass-fed kind. I eat four sticks in a month, so that's $16 a month. And then let's also add $20 a month for spices and salt or whatever. And then another $150 a month, just in case you want to spend a little extra on some nights. So let's break this down. One chicken breast per meal per day, that's $10 per day. One bushel of asparagus per day, that's $7 a day. Our rice comes to about $1.20 per day, and our add-ins come into about $6.25 per day, so let's add this all up. Your daily cost for this meal twice a day comes out to just under $25 per day or $12.50 per meal, $175 per week, and at maximum $775 per month. But we were originally talking about three meals per day. So using this meal as an example, adding in an extra 31 meals is going to bring your bill to $1,163 per month. The price difference between our fast food meals and our whole foods meals, $187 per month. It's not a crazy difference, but it's an extra almost $200 you didn't have before 
now just hanging out in your bank account. And it's also cheaper than eating fast food. So miss me with how eating organic foods is more expensive. You're just wrong. You can bring that total even lower if you swap chicken with up to a dozen eggs for breakfast and half a package of bacon for asparagus in the morning. Think organic is a scam and don't want to shop at Whole Foods? Great, your bill just got even cheaper. Buying all of these non-organic ingredients at Ralph's is going to bring your chicken bill to $3 per pound, asparagus to $5 per day, rice down to about $8 per month, and when you add it all up, your new total is only $6.75 per meal. Total food budget, $628 per month. So let's break this down. Fast food, $1,350 per month. Whole foods, $1,163 per month. Ralph's or a regular grocery store, $628 per month. Obviously, these are the best and worst case scenarios, so your mileage may vary, but it's clear that from a health perspective and definitely from a financial perspective, that growing up, getting your elbows dirty, and making your own food at home is the way to go. Also, I'm not a doctor, but I would avoid any soy products at all costs. Just saying, just saying, just saying. <laughs> Looks Maxer exercise advice is sound, and it's the standard stuff. Work out, build muscle. A big portion of exercise routines they'll give you involves the muscles that make you look pretty, mainly your shoulders, arms, abs, but especially your neck. Have a weak jawline and don't believe in mewing? Bulk that neck up. The basic idea is that building up your neck makes your jawline and face look more masculine, broad, and defined. I've heard looks maxers say that your neck should be about 80% the width as your jaw, so if you're not there naturally, it's time to exercise. You can look up some neck exercises if you'd like, but what lands exercise in the good category is well, duh. Exercise is amazing for you. If you're not already doing it, I highly recommend it. Muscle growth in general promotes higher testosterone in your body, and we already talked about how important testosterone is. More muscle along with your decreased fat is going to turn you into a testosterone mega factory. Think of all the benefits. Increased focus, higher libido, you literally ooze confidence that women love, more energy, decreased risk of depression, I could go on forever. Anyway, exercise is good, Find a routine that works for you and do your best to stick to it. Bang. Skin care. It's got teeth like me. Looks maxers care about their skin probably more than anything else. If your jawline sucks, you have a pig nose, and you're a whale, well, you can always have good skin. And one of the easiest ways to have good skin is to keep it clean and moisturized. There are a ton of options on the market. I use Cetaphil Daily Cleanser and Moisturizer, but anything will do. People get into fights all the time about what's the best product for your face, but in general, any moisturizer is better than no moisturizer. Your skin is a direct reflection of your overall health. Never a bad excuse to take a little extra time each night or each night you remember to keep that shit clean and wet. On the same page, the biggest danger to your skin is the sun. Sunscreen lotion is yet another tip that every looks maxer will recommend as well as every dermatologist to ever exist, so. Some looks maxers turn to BB cream to keep their skin looking fresh as well as protected from the sun. All BB cream is is just a very light foundation and sun protection factor. It's a little gay for sure, but what are you gonna do? A bunch of these looks maxers will submit their pictures to more attractive looks maxers just to get them rated. Guys asking other guys to tell them how pretty they are. That's the real gay and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Anyway, keep it moist and protected from the sun. Hygiene, how do I spell hygiene? Looks maxer advice for hygiene, shower daily. Some of these guys shower twice a day, which I think is crazy because it makes no sense. I shower once in the morning and once at night, but for why? What are you doing at night that makes you need to shower when you wake up? Unless, oh no. Oh God, they're gooning. Anyway, so yeah, can't believe this is something that's given as advice, but you should shower and you should brush your teeth and your tongue. Everyone forgets to do it, but brother, I'm telling you, game changer. Tongue scraping or just brushing your tongue when you're done with your teeth is gonna leave your breath smelling so good, you have no idea. Shower, brush, floss, mouthwash, the whole nine yards. This is up there with fat loss as far as importance goes.
Uh, so this is now my fourth time recording this closing section. The first time I felt as if I didn't say enough and I wasn't happy with it. The second time I said the perfect amount, but it was kind of like a downer take. I think it was just because it was a long night. The third time, which was just before this, uh, I f nailed it. But for whatever reason, the dr audio driver for my microphone made it sound all choppy. So time number four in closing looks maxing is whatever, dude. I mean, I don't want to be the guy who says that some groups of people are like worth more than others or that like some groups of people should hold more of our attention than others but like we're talking about incels here these are the same guys that kind of live in like a perpetual state of defeat thinking that like if i wasn't born with xyz i'll never have xyz so if i wasn't born with david beckham's jawline or dwayne the rock johnson's muscles like i'll never have a girl that's worth anything and so in their kind of like defeatist mindset they turn to things like looks maxing to like kind of correct what they can and from what i've seen from the people i've researched like this is all they think about right so it's kind of like you know you get out what you put in so if you're putting in all this like surface level thought and kind of just nonsense that's what you're going to get out so when you finally do find a girl who like meets your attractiveness level well unfortunately you did all your time looks maxing and you didn't put anything into your personality stat so uh you both they're going to be two-dimensional stick figures, attractive stick figures, but you're both going to be two-dimensional stick figures walking around wondering what the f*** happened. There's a South Park episode where they talk about, like, attractiveness and whatnot, and in that episode, it shows uh, a bunch of these ugly kids, like, learning talents and, like, really, like, pouring themselves into their personality, showing that attractive people are going to have it easy in life, and thus they never really build a personality, and ugly people wind up being the ones, like, with all this cool shit, all this cool talent, all this great personality, and then you start to ask yourself, like, which one of these people do I want to hang out with more? Not to say that attractive people don't have personality. I think they do. I mean, look at me. I'm not going to show you only GF, but she is a 10 out of 10 hot and a hundred out of a hundred personality. So like it exists and it's not like every, you know, attractive person is going to be personality list. But if you're one of these looks maxing guys and you're spending all your time doing the looks stuff and never developing a personality, your personality becomes your look and you become kind of a uh, blank piece of paper piece of shit and so the girls you're gonna find who uh, are attracted to that are blank piece of paper pieces of shit like i don't know what to tell you but i don't think this is something we should be worrying about um if you find if you've watched this video and you made it this far and you're considering looks maxing for yourself i don't think there's anything wrong with that what i do think is while you're looks maxing maybe pick up the guitar maybe try to learn piano maybe get good at coding go back to college a lot of you guys i'm sure are still in school so i don't gotta worry there uh, but like, don't focus too much on the looks stuff. Moisturize your face, uh, brush your teeth, take a shower. Those are the real things you got to do. Lose some weight if you're fat. Um, oh, Jack's only Jack's fat phobia is on full fucking display now. Goddamn right it is. Um, and yeah, that's 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 the thing. Looks maxing is just a language incels speak to convince each other to take showers and if these basement dwelling terminally online people are getting in the shower and smelling good then i'm all for it uh these are people that i don't think uh we really need to worry about again they're gonna attract they're, they're going to uh, attract in what they put out and so i think this problem over time is going to um itself quite literally out of existence so no big deal slop video uh, if you like the video, please feel free to subscribe. Um, here are my members. I really love these guys. And as promised, here is my looks maxing routine. So I've been only Jax. Until next time, uh, don't be an incel. I don't know. You're going to be in my video? You want to be in my looks maxing video? Why cry kitty? Why cry kitty? What's wrong with the kitty? This is the only Jax looks maxing section of the video. This is where I'm going to show you my looks back screen routine, just like I said I would. I don't want to shave my face again because me being without a mustache has been, like, I just feel naked without it. So we're not going to shave, but I will show you the rest of my routine because it's something. It's something. Here we go. So my routine normally happens uh, at night, right before I go to bed. Sometimes I'll shower before, sometimes I won't. Um, but either way, it involves cleaning my face, moisturizing my face, brushing my teeth, taking my contacts out uh, in no particular order. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so first what we'll do is we'll take off our hat. Now my hairline is on full display. So we're gonna take our Cetaphil daily facial cleanser and uh, well, we're just gonna daily facial cleanse with it. So we'll start with our face nice and wet.
Now that our face is nice and wet, we will take the daily facial cleanser and we will squirt some into our hand. Just gonna lather and lather. Now, only GF doesn't use a rag to clean her face off, which I think is actually psycho, but what are you gonna do? All right, let this go again, and we're gonna use our rag to get this off. All right, now that our face is clean from the facial cleanser, um, I sometimes I dry it off afterwards, sometimes I don't. But we'll just pat right now and we'll take the moisturizing, it's like Cetaphil moisturizing lotion. We'll just like, like that much. Like you don't need, you don't need much. Like that much is gonna be just fine. Do our Indian war paint, kind of get it everywhere. You don't really need to rub it in, I don't think. I just kind of like make sure a moisturized part of my fingers like touches a dry part of my face and your face should feel uh, slick and then you know you're done. And now this is where my insecurities are going to be on full display. I hit my hairline so we're going to put the hat back on. Wow, so much better. So much better guys. Uh, now we brush our teeth. I use a soft bristle toothbrush because my gums bleed when I brush my teeth. Uh, I've seen a dentist about it. There's not much they can do. They recommended the soft bristle brush. So that's what I use. I use um, Crest Plus, I think. Oh, Crest Plus Scope is what that says. And then I got this little like end thing here from Daiso. It makes, uh, it, makes it so like I'm not like squeezing the tube, so. That's too much toothpaste, I know that, but like it looked good for the video, so. And then you just like brush for however long you feel like you want to. Don't spit. Now it's time for your tongue. You wanna get your tongue is what I was just trying to say right there, so. Oh, you can see. I don't know why that is, I don't press very hard. I don't know why that is. I try to eat like more hard food. So like my gums, like, I don't know. I've it's done that for years, but anyway. The only downside of using a soft bristle brush is that you kind of got to like scrub it with your fingers to get it like completely clean, but like whatever. Uh, now is the time we mouthwash. Very important, very important we mouthwash. Some people use the cup, I don't. I hate mouthwashing, it's so gross. Not the act of it, it's when I gargle, I get triggers by gag reflex. So this is the time, well now I will use the cup to put water in my mouth. Because I read somewhere that you don't really want the mouthwash hanging out in your mouth for long periods of time. I, my mouthwash makes me get blue on my tongue, so I try to get that off. Eh, close enough, okay. And uh, that's the whole routine. If you're doing that three times a week, your skin's gonna look good, you're gonna feel good, make sure you're showering. Uh, you will be as good looking as you can be so long as you're eating right, keeping your weight healthy. Uh, this is to keep your skin healthy. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope this was worth it, you staying to the end for. And uh, yeah, uh, until next time, I don't have anything clever to say this time. I'll see you in the next one. You made it to the end of the video. You should subscribe or maybe just leave a like. Leave a comment if you please. But I'd rather you subscribe. I check that shit like every day. And when that subscriber number goes up, well, my heart goes up to the sky. When you 